I'm Joe. Hi, I'm Gavin. And today, guys, we're going to be tasting a fantastic New Zealand Sauvignon, which I know everyone out there in the UK is going mad for at the moment. Basically, we've picked one with a little bit of a difference. Quality lead, um, not mass produced, got his own label, um, which is important in New Zealand at the moment, Gav. I mean, I, Why is that then? They're struggling with branded? Or? Well, there's, I mean, you think about this, there's not that many wineries in New Zealand, but no. there's so many in, in terms of in Marlborough. I mean, I can't remember exactly how many wine is there, but there's just thousands of labels so all the supermarket labels you know they're not even making their own wine so they're not right. focused on on quality where this guy mahi um really is so um i mean you know let's just get started with the wine and i'll, well, you I'll know talk this you through guy, as we go you? you've been down there yeah i've met times. yeah I've, I've met brian great bloke he was making wine in chile um big wine company called erasmus and he was one of the first people in New Zealand to go back and use wild yeast. Why are wild yeast important then? This is your yeast up here. You've got about 15 different yeasts in the wine. Yeah. As the yeast die during ferment, they all leave another little flavour behind, Gav. Okay. Loads of different little flavours make up quite a unique product. So um, what this guy does, I mean, the key with this wine is when he presses the grapes, he basically only takes free run juice. And that's the sort of really fresh, pure expression of the Sauvignon. Anything that's been left with the berries, he'll sell on to Cloudy Bay or Felton oh, okay. Road, something like that, you know, all those chavs. So basically, I mean, this is just free run juice. And also, he puts a little bit, he puts a tiny, 8% of the wine goes in oak, old oak. Okay. Just to give the back, do you, like, you know, do you like that? The back of the throat, it's yeah, a nice yeah. little technique. Just to give the back a bit of structure on the back of the palate, it just holds the wine together. The problem with Kiwi Sauvignon is, smells great because it's been in contact with the skins. Yeah. And it tastes flabby and just you just lose you just well, lose. Well, I always the... find I can have a couple of glasses. Yeah. And then that's it. I, you know, I can't get to an end of a bottle of uh, New Zealand yeah. and stuff. I just sit there and think that's too much. It's well, what he wants. Cynic, or there's, as you say, yeah, it's I a agree. Bit All right, what he wants is more restrained palate, but longer. Yeah. And that's what using the free run juice is. Not over the top, but just goes on forever. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. The thing is with Sauvignon, you get that lovely herbaceous style on the nose. A little bit of elderflower, not too much of that over-the-top gooseberry. Quite passion fruit as well. Do you think um, more Loire style, a bit more French style, a bit understated? Or? I think he's basically trying to sit squarely between the two. With the reds that he makes, very Burgundian style Pinot Noir as well. So he does look to Burgundy for, for a model. Um, obviously with his Sauvignon, he's trying to make, as I said, something a bit more restrained, a bit more elegant. I mean, I think elegance is the key. And bottom line is, Gav, that's pretty untouchable. So, cheers. cheers.